Yeah, okay, everybody. So, sorry for the delay. I will have the first mini session now, which is about um, pulse width modulation, PWM, which is, uh, which is what it's usually referred to. But uh, PWM, it stands for pulse width modulation. Uh, so I will go through uh, soft PWM first, and then I will talk about that you can actually call some utility functions uh, already from within Arduino. So the point of this uh, uh, mini session is that you should really understand uh, the concept of pulse width modulation uh, in relation to Arduino and electronics. Uh, and to do that, we will do, uh, I will first show basically a coded version of it, which is uh, written by hand in code. And I will also do some draw, uh, make some drawings that uh, discusses the functionality and how it works. And then we will go into how you can actually do it uh, much more easily. <laughs> but uh, sometimes you have to go the hard way to understand something. So we'll start in that end. Um, <coughs> so actually, let's first uh, take a look um, here. Um, pulse with modulation. Well, it stands for... Uh, a pulse is uh, a signal like this. So if you modulate the pulse width, you would basically uh, change the ratio between the uptime and the downtime on this signal. So for example, if you have a very small uh, pulse, you would have maybe something like this. And uh, as you can see, uh, if this is time and uh, this uh, is basically the voltage or something like that, um, you can see that uh, the interval for each cycle here is uh, the same. Oh, kind of. Well, I'm not drawing that good, but uh, so uh, the cycle, one cycle has the same length here. So the only thing you're varying for this signal here, uh, this one compared to this one, is uh, how much is on and how much is off of the whole uh, interval of, or the whole period of the signal. So that was, is what basically pulse width modulation is about. And why do we want to uh, create pulse width modulation? Why, wh how do we want to use it and why do we want to use it? Well. Uh, a lot of you tried um, analog read yesterday on the Arduino to read analog values or analog voltages from sensors or potentiometers uh, and so on. So uh, what if we want to output analog voltages? Well, uh, the traditional way to do that is with something called uh, DAC, Digital to Analog Converter. Uh, and it's a special type of circuitry. Uh, but in the Arduino we don't have access to such uh, circuitry because it's kind of expensive and it's not uh, the, the Arduino is a rather simple device. So we, it, we don't have a DAC, a digital to analog converter. But we still want to be able, for example, to fade, like in this case, an LED. And as you see, I can turn this potentiometer here to make it a little bit less bright. How can we achieve this? Well. Uh, you can fake it, kind of. Uh, so instead of outputting a real analog voltage, like for example 2.5 volts, or uh, 4 volts, or 1 volt, or something like that, we can turn on and off the 5 volts power uh, with different ratios of the uptime, or on time, and downtime. And depending on the pulse width of the signal, we will get uh, a different mean, uh, the mean value of the voltage. So for example, if we would take this signal for example, and we see here it's 5 volts half of the time, and it's 0 volts the other half of the time, and it goes up and down like this very quickly usually, the mean value of this signal would be somewhere around here. 
and this would uh, be equivalent then to 2.5 volts or it would be comparable to 2.5 volts. Of course the voltage in the circuit what, that we output is not actually 2.5 volts but it's going up and down between 5 volts and 0 volts but the overall if you take it over a long time the, uh, the average is 2.5 and this is the trick that we can use in some context uh, contexts to uh, almost get analog output. Uh, so this is the point of positive modulation. So if you take this example which I have here, uh, I can turn this potentiometer and you can see that the LED is fading. The LED is actually not changing its brightness, it's rather turning on and off really quickly. And what happens is that our eyes are so slow in their perception so we can see the turning on and off with the light. So instead our eyes uh, think that it's kind of less bright when it's actually actually it's blinking very quickly. Sometimes you might be able to see the blinks. Um, when I'm drawing here on the potentiometers. So this is, the, this is uh, what we usually use p uh, pulse-width modulation for. You can also use it not only for, for example, running LEDs. You could uh, use it to run uh, motors, and you can run it to, uh, yeah, send control signals to some kind of circ some uh, types of circuitry, uh, and so on. So it's a useful thing to <coughs> have in your arsenal. Let's have a look at the code for uh, the thing you see in the table here. So here I have the code for this uh, Arduino project and uh, I've named it soft PVM uh, and I have the LED on pin 3 as you can see there and I have also uh, connected a potentiometer which you all should have tried by now I guess uh, and I connected it to analog in 0 so A0 uh, and then I can read the analog value from the potentiometer uh, it's, of course, connected to ground and uh, VCC, 5 volt, that is. Uh, so I can turn the potentiometer to get the reading between 0 and 1023. Um, so I have some variables here in my code before the loop. I have something which I call duty. Uh, and when I say duty, I refer to uh, this part in the cycle. So uh, du the duty is u usually re uh, a percentage. So if this time here is a few milliseconds or something like that, uh, I think I put it to 5,000 microseconds now. So that's how long this one is. 5,000 microseconds and the duty will be a percentage of this. So if it's for example 0 0.5 it will be 2500 microseconds on and 2500 microseconds off and by changing the duty uh, I can basically uh, change the ratio between on and off time like this and in this case I've started with a duty of 1.0 which would then mean that it's on all the time uh, in my code here, I'm basically reading the uh, potentiometer value, and I call it A value, as in analog value. And uh, then I uh, actually, because uh, the analog value always return between 0 and 2023, I have converted it to a float. A float is a floating point number, so a decimal number, basically, in Arduino. Instead of, for example, int here, which is an... Oh, sorry, I have to change to the other screen. Uh, so here I'm reading the analog uh, value from the potentiometer and uh, I take it in here and convert it to a float uh, so it becomes a decimal number and then I can uh, divide by 1023 so then it will be basically uh, a number between uh, 0 and 1 which is what I want because I want to have it as a percentage and yeah, percentage is the same as 0 to 1 uh, and then I can apply uh, the duty which I calculate here then to uh, the period. 
so I get a, a, a number of microseconds it should be on and I get the number of uh, microseconds it should be off so the on time should basically be the duty cycle uh, as you see so the period times duty in this case it's uh, set to 1.0 in the start so it would be the whole period and how do we calculate the off time well basically we should have the uh, the rest of the percentages so we take 100% here kind of and uh, just subtract the already used percentage of the, of the uh, whole period and uh, this whole expression then is also uh, uh, multiplied with the whole period so in, in this way we can have uh, not changing the period time it will always be uh, the same uh, an amount of microseconds for the total on and off time. So it will always be 5000 microseconds for the on and off time. But the ratio between on and the, re and the off time will vary depending on the duty. And as you see the duty can then also vary when I'm turning the knob because I do the analog read here and uh, it will affect the duty value. In this case I also have made some printouts uh, just to see the on time here. That was uh, when I created a sketch I wanted to see if I get some reasonable values. Um, but I think now I'm happy with the results so I will actually comment that out. So putting two slashes in front of this line basically deactivates the line. And I can upload it and I, we will now see that um, Uh, I will just change so you can see the serial monitor. So that's better. Uh, now you can see that uh, there is no output in the serial monitor. Um, so what happens then when I calculated the on time and off time? Uh, I can basically uh, turn the LED on as I do here. I put it to high, 5 volts the LED pin then I wait how long well on time this is how long I wait and then I should turn it off and how long should it be off yeah well this amount of time which I calculated previously and then it will just repeat this all over again all over um, and we get thus uh, a fading LED As you can see, I will also zoom in to a little bit. So this is uh, how you implement uh, software pulse width modulation, or one way to do it. Uh, of course, you can have variations of this uh, and uh, use different tricks. Uh, so this is just how I did it. Uh, but then let's talk about how you can actually uh, avoid using all these calculations in your code and uh, uh, have a much simple way, simpler way to do it. So what I will actually do now is to also uh, write to another pin. And there is this function called analog write. Uh, and the analog write is basically doing exactly the same thing. It's uh, do creating a pulse width modulation uh, signal and it sends it to one of the pins. But one must be aware because uh, the Arduino, it can't do PWM on all of the pins, only a few of them. And how do we know which ones? Well, if you look carefully, you can see there is a small tilde sign in front of the numbers on the Arduino. If I turn it like this, it might be easier for you to see. So for example, in front, in front of 13, 11, 10, 9, 6, 5, uh, 3. Yeah, those are the ones which on this one has the pulse width modulation capability. So I had to choose one of those ones to actually be able to do the analog write function. So um, I will try actually with uh, number 13. And why is that? Well, number 13 is the built in LED which is uh, already attached to the Arduino. So I don't have to connect an extra LED then 
to try out this functionality. I could of course choose, for example, 10 here, but then I would have to connect an extra LED. Uh, we might do that afterwards, but let's start with 13 and see what happens. So, uh, there is something missing here in my code. I now, now wrote analog write 13, but because I want to write a value, I have to provide that as well. So that is the second argument. And what is the value? Uh, the first uh, thing you might think is that you should perhaps write a, a value between 0 and 1, like I was doing in my uh, software version here with the duty cycle. Uh, but that is not the case. For the analog write function, it expects a value between 0 and 255. So uh, let's try with that. I will now, oh well, let's try with 100. So a little bit less bright for the LED number 13 now. And see if we can upload the code. Yeah, and uh, I see that the LED uh, 13 is uh, is lighting up and it's kind of still very bright uh, so I could uh, potentially lower the value and put perhaps 40 in there and see what happens and uh, now I see that it's much less brighter uh, so uh, that is how we can vary the uh, brightness of the LED but of course now I want to do the same thing which I did with the uh, potentiometer, to have the potentiometer. Uh, as you see, I read the analog value from the potentiometer, and I want to, of course, not affect only the uh, LED on the breadboard, but also LED number 13 on the uh, Arduino. So how would I do that? Well, the analog input, the analog value I received from the potentiometer is goes between zero and 1023 and it's rather uh, convenient because the analog write expects a value between 0 and 255 so what I could do is basically take the analog value which I have received and divide it by 4 so this will basically scale it down from uh, between 0 and 1023 to a value between 0 and 255 uh, so let's try that and see what happens. If I now turn the potentiometer, you can see that both the LED on the board and uh, the LED on the breadboard, I mean the, what that, uh, uh, LED on the Arduino board and on the breadboard, they are both fading up and down when I turn the potentiometer. So, uh, as you can see, there's a huge difference in the amount of code I had to write. So, I would encourage all of you to uh, try to uh, understand the principle of this part of the code. Um, but in day-to-day -day use, it's of course much more convenient to use the analog write function. I should point out a utility function which is really useful. Um, let's take the opportunity here. Uh, the convenience thing that we could just divide by 4 to get uh, the, the correct uh, scaling of the analog value. Well, sometimes not, that is not the case. And there is a really nice function which is called map. So I could take and create a new integer here and say uh, write value or something like that. And instead of doing a value divided by 4, I can do map. And map takes an input value and it maps it from the, uh, its, its values which it ha has so I know that a value it goes between 0 and 1023 but I want to remap that to another range so from the range 0 to 1023 to the new range which is 0 to 255 so this is another way then I would not uh, do the divide by 4, I would just take the new remapped value here. So this will be the same result. Uh, and this is convenient if you have some more weird uh, ranges that are harder to find a nice ratio to, to rescale to. 
And let's have a look then if this uh, works. And uh, it seems to be the case that it still works. So uh, this was a small mini session about uh, puzzle modulation and, uh, and the analog write function. Uh, might really come in handy for you guys.